Hey guys, Zom Fox here, and today it's time to do the second division standings prediction for the 2023 NFL season, and today we're going to be looking at the AFC West. This division is definitely one that is was really hyped last year, definitely overhyped as it completely flopped in terms of being this historically great division. Well, how does it look for this next season? Well, to start, we have to look at last year. Last year, the Chiefs won the division going 14-3. and They easily cruised to win the division thanks to a 7-1 home record, and the fact that they just were unbelievable in the conference going 9-3. and But simply, they were just really great. I mean, then you had the Chargers finish second at 10-7 and to make the playoffs as a wild card. They were a solid team. They weren't really insane. Their net points shows that their point differential isn't the best. The Raiders finished 6-11, and though a lot of close games kind of hampered them. They had a pretty pretty decent overall net points for a team that was that below it. scoring-wise, and they finished the year going 1-4, and four, which is the big reason why they missed the playoffs. And then, of course, you have the Denver Broncos train wreck of a season where they finished 5-12, and 12, finished bottom of the division, and one of the worst teams in the entire league. Last year, the AFC West ended up playing the AFC South and the NFC West, two divisions that Yeah, the both team, both divisions basically had one team that was a juggernaut, or not really the AFC South. The AFC South was probably the worst division last year. Yes, even worse than the NFC South. I don't think a lot of people are giving credit to the AFC South for just how bad they were last year. The NFC West really wasn't that good either. The Rams and Cardinals are basically just trash in the Seahawks. They had stretches, but really the only good team was the Niners. So basically these teams, in theory, should have won at least six games just on those divisions. And then this year, however, they're playing a couple harder divisions. The AFC East, which we talked about in the last video, is a division that definitely could have four good teams. I think only three, but I still think three solid teams. And the NFC North, pending what you believe, the hype says that this division is going to have four really good teams. So this is definitely going to be a much harder group of divisions to play than last year. But without further ado, let's talk about the first team in the LA Chargers. The LA Chargers in power rankings were 10th in sports, not 9th in ESPN, 8th in PFF, 13th in NFL, and 15th in Pro Football Network. A very wide array when you have a seven-spot difference. And honestly, I think that, at least to me, I would say the closest one is probably NFL. I think the Chargers are getting a bit overhyped, and I think it's mainly because of, well, Justin Herbert. Yes, I do believe Justin Herbert is an overrated quarterback. I don't believe he's bad by any means. But he's basically just Phillip Rivers, yet everybody's trying to hype him up. He's Aaron Rodgers in his prime. The dude is great. He finished second in yards last year, he's tied for eighth in TDs, 14th in interceptions, being top 10 in TDs, outside top 10 in interceptions, that's good. Third in completion percentage is incredible. But when you're that good in yards, that good in completion percentage, and you're 12th in pass rating, not the best, but he still did have a really incredible year pass rating wise. 93.2 is nothing to scoff at. But tied seventh in sacks taken, he did take a lot of sacks. The team itself did end up finishing as a relatively decent team on offense, but defense, they ended up finishing outside the top 20 or barely 20. With offense, they were a borderline top 10 unit, depending on whether you care about points or yards. This team was great passing the ball, but rushing-wise, not as much. Austin Eckler's their big running back, but he does a lot in the receiving end, so kind of hurts them in the rushing game. Now, in terms of this team and who they added and lost, this is where I really, really get off any sort of bandwagon for this team. They really didn't do anything notable. I looked at all their additions, and I'm like, Eric Kendricks is basically it. They're basically just going to go healthy, bank on Quinton Johnson, their first-round pick receiver, and the fact they have a much better OC in Kellen Moore versus Joe Lombardi. You have a coach that everybody expects to be fired at the end of the season. You lost a couple guys. You didn't lose any huge names. You lost Kyle Van Noy, Nasir Adderley. But you didn't really do much to gain. And when we look at the other teams, they tried to get better. The Chargers really didn't. They just tried to bring the exact same team and then draft. I don't think this is the best decision, especially in division with the Chiefs. But it seems like they're playing for second place. I don't see this team even really competing with the Chiefs at all. That's just my thoughts on it. I think that overall, this was definitely a very very lackluster offseason for the Chargers. There's a lot they could have done, and they just chose not to. 
And then some of the draft picks, you got, you know, a couple guys on defense, which should be helpful. You need to bolster up the defense. Because I think that your coach is supposed to be a defensive guy, Staley. And his defense hasn't really been good. That's not a good sign. Next team to talk about is the Denver Broncos. Honestly, I'm kind of shocked at where they're on the power rankings by a lot of these places. They're basically 23rd to 27. Well, literally 23rd on three different ones. And then NFL has them all the way down at 27. Kind of shocked. I think this team is actually underrated. I don't think they're that good, but I don't think they're this bad. Now, look, who was that bad, though, was Mr. Unlimited. Russ was absolutely trash last year. In the 15 games he played, he ended up finishing top 10 in interceptions thrown, which is not good. Tied for 19th in TDs, not great. You want to be the other way around. You'd rather be top 10 in touchdowns and then top 20 in picks. He was the opposite. 13th in yards isn't great, especially when you consider the fact that he wasn't even in the top 20 for pass rating or completion percentage. In fact, he was barely in the top 30 in completion percentage as he was 30th. And then tied first in sacks taken when you only played in 15 games, so you didn't even play in all 17. And Brett Rippon did have some snaps in a couple of them. Yeah, not a good look for Russ. The team itself was also terrible in offense. They were worse than points and barely escaped bottom 10 in yards. Defense, they were actually pretty solid. Top 10 in yards, top 15 in points. They were basically just handicapped by their offense. It was either Melvin Gordon fumbling footballs, Russ not understanding you're supposed to throw to an open guy, or just a bunch of really dumb stuff happening, terrible clock management, all those kind of things. Now, in terms of their additions and losses, they got a lot more than what I'm showing, but they got a lot. Look, the big question is their overhauled coaching staff. You lo- you lose Nathaniel Hackett, Ross Berg, Oten, and Evero. You gain Peyton, Lombardi, and Joseph. When I look at it, I look at Sean Payton as a definite upgrade over Ross Berg and Hackett. I look at Lombardi as a kind of just eh move compared to Oten. But then you look at Vance to Evero. Evero is now like one of the top DCs, especially with how bad that team was, and he was able to make great defense out of him. So I really don't think getting Joseph back to the Broncos as well, that was really weird. I really don't see that as that big a move. If anything, I see it as a downgrade. So I think their coaching staff is kind of lateral, though I give them an edge this year because I think Peyton is just that much better than Hackett and Rossberg, you know, like everybody does. But the team itself, they basically traded a lot of different kind of players. You lose Dramont Jones, you get Frank Clark. You lose Dalton Reisner, you lose um, Calvin Anderson, but now you get Ben Powers and Mike McGlinchey. You lose Andrew Beck, you get Chris Manhurts. You know what I mean? Kind of a lot of just him moves. You got Marvin Mims in the draft. That was your big move you really got. You got Riley Moss. You got Drew Sanders. You got some guys really to help on the defense. I mean, you really didn't have a lot of picks. You handicapped yourselves thanks to the genius Russell Wilson trade. But overall, my thoughts on the Broncos, I think they're a bit underrated. Look, I think personally they're going to finish as a team that's ranked like in power rankings like 16 to 20. Going to be just outside that top 50% threshold, but they're going to miss out on being a bottom 10 team. I think that Russell will have a better year than last year, but I'm not saying he'll be great, just a better year than last year, and last year wasn't even good enough for a Pro Bowl, basically. That shows how bad he was. I think he'll be a bit better with this offense and everything, but I don't think the team's going to be that great. So I just, I don't really see them as that good. I think they're going to miss the playoffs again. I do think they're going to finish last in the division again. I just, I don't really see this team as a threat to me. I don't look at their coaching staff and say, I'm terrified. I see Sean Payton, you're like, oh, that's actually good. And then you see Vance Joseph and Joe Lombardi as your OC and DC, and you go, oh, okay, it's not really that bad. Your defending Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs. No surprise, they are number one in all five of the power rankings, as they should be. There is no argument they should be anywhere else. They are the best team in the league until proven otherwise. Glad that none of these... Companies decide to do some random decision and put, like, the Bengals or Eagles above them. Overall, solid. I mean, it's pretty obvious. You look at Mahomes. Dude was incredible last year. The MVP winner. First team All-Pro. Seventh in interceptions. You say that's bad. And for him, yeah, it's a bit worse. But when you're number one in TDs, number one in yards, top 10 in completion percentage, second in passer rating, and you're outside the top 20 in sacks taken, that's pretty good. This team was the number one offense, both yards and points, and we're actually a top 50% defense on both yards and points. Passing-wise, they weren't. I mean, passing-wise, they are great, too. They were league leaders in passing yards. They were league leaders in passing touchdowns. 
Yes, the rushing suffered a bit, but this team has never really been known as a rushing team. Just an incredible year for Mahomes. It's pretty obvious this team is just insane. Mahomes was great last year. Proved you don't really need to re-kill. You still got Travis Kelsey and Andrew Reid, so that's basically all you need. Now, in terms of the free agent moves, that's where we get into a bit of question marks. Now, to be fair, so was it last year. There are big questions. Do you actually think that this guy or this guy is going to be a big deal? And when you look at it, the big question is, of course, you lose Eric Bieniemy. The question of the day is, is Eric Bieniemy that guy? I don't know. Look, I've never been a huge fan of him. I don't actually look at him and say I think he deserves most of the credit. I do think most of the credit does deserve to go to Andy Reid. I think Reed is incredible at what he does offensively. So I actually don't really think that the loss of the enemy is going to be that big a deal. Though I will say, I think that the losses you did have are just kind of not a big deal, except I think Chad Henney is actually a big loss. He's been unbelievable whenever he has to come in for Patrick Mahomes, ever since that Henney thing is possible game against the Browns. He's been an incredible backup to have in getting Blaine Gabbert, who was Brady's backup. I do think that's a bit of a L, but not terrible. You did lose more guys than you gained. You lost McCall Hardman, who has been great for you. You lost Juju, who had a solid year. You lost Frank Clark, who's... You lost Orlando Brown. That's going to hurt. Andrew Wiley, going to hurt a bit. Juan Thornhill, yeah, some, some hard moves. You didn't really gain the best. You did get Drew Tranquil off the Chargers, so that's a solid move. You got Juwan Taylor. You got Donovan Smith. But in terms of the draft, you drafted an edge rusher in the first round. You draft a wide receiver in the second. You draft an offensive tackle in the third. They basically don't care about the defense, which I respect that. They're just they're pro- trying to be what they are, which is an offensive-heavy team. Overall, I think that even though some of the moves, I think that overall they actually deproved in free agency, I think. I still look at the team and I say, you have Andy Reid. You got my homeboy. You got Kelsey. You're fine. The last team to talk about is the Las Vegas Raiders. Power rankings-wise, they range anywhere from 19th to 29th. ESPN's got them at 19, Sports Not and PFF 25, NFL 22, and then PFN's all the way at 29. I agree more so with the ESPN one, but this is naturally because of one huge question, and that's whether or not Josh Jacobs and Jimmy G actually play. Jimmy G's had this whole ankle debacle basically ever since he signed with the team. Will he play week one? We don't know for sure. It looks like he probably will. Then Josh Jacobs is part of the, you know, great running back holdout of 2023. So big question marks. That's probably why they're so low. The team itself, honestly, should be pretty solid. Look, last year they did have a pretty poor defense outside of the top 25 in both yards and points. But offensively, they were top 15. They were 12th in yards and 12th in points. In fact, they were top 12 in passing, despite the fact that Derek Carr really didn't play that well last year. He had a 60 completion percentage, or 60.8. He had a sub-90 quarterback rate or passer rating, 14 picks, 24 TDs isn't the best. Compared to the new signal caller, Jimmy G, who played in about 10, 11 games last year as a full-time starter, he was incredible. Look, I don't get the Jimmy G hate. He's been a legit top 10 quarterback whenever he's healthy, and everybody's like to hate on him because they say, oh, but, you know, Niners team good, you know. But yet they'll give all the praise in the world to Brock Purdy and say he's incredible, but then hate on Jimmy G. I don't get it. Jimmy G was outside the top 30 in interceptions. He was or he was 37th. He was top 20 in TDs. Remember, he played like just over half a season. 23rd in yards. Played barely over half a season. Top 5 in completion percentage. 3rd in pass rating. That's insane. 34th in sacks taken. Yeah, yeah, this guy sucks. Look, the big question is his health. But when he's healthy, he is a top 10 quarterback. He has done nothing to show otherwise. He's been great everywhere he's been, whenever he plays. Incredible. Just is a matter of does he play. As for the team itself, this team, I think, overall had a much better free agency than basically any other team. You lose Derek Carr, but you get Jimmy G. At this point, you could argue it's an upgrade or a lateral move. You lose Darren Waller and Forrest and Foster Moreau, but you gain Austin Hooper and Michael Mayer. So if Michael Mayer is what we think he's going to be, solid move. If not, the Raiders win that move. You get Jacoby Myers, you lose Matt Collins. Matt Collins has been pretty solid, but Jacoby Myers is a much better receiver. Jacoby's a definite W. Now, Fassie Sun and Epps versus 
Everett and Yassin. A bit more questionable. You get Brian Hoyer versus Jared Stidham. Both guys are from the McDaniels tree, so kind of okay. Lateral move again. Lose Clyde and Farrell. It's been a disappointment basically ever since he drafted him. Instead, you got Robert Spillane, and then you get Greg Van Roten. I think those are overall better. So, I think that overall you look at it, I think that the team's additions were better. You also did get, you know, defensive end in the first round. You did get defensive tackle in the second, in the third round. You got a receiver in the third round. So, I mean, I think the Raiders definitely overall were better in this one. Trey Tucker should be a really great threat for this team if he makes the team. So, overall, really solid. So, my thoughts on the Raiders. Very simple. It all depends on two guys, Josh Jacobs and Jimmy G. If they both play, this team's going to be great. They really are. Because this offense is going to be really good, and their defense can't get any worse than what it was. I mean, you hope Chandler Jones is a better year than he did last year. You still got Max Crosby. You're getting extra edge rushers. This D-line could legit be one of the best in the league. Now, yes, defensive backs, that could be an area for exploitation. But if your defensive line is good enough, you can just, you know, blitz a lot and, you know, Try and make the quarterback make mistakes. And the offense, like I said, you got a really solid group. You just need health and then to actually play. So these are two big ifs. But if Jimmy G plays at least like 70% of the games, and if Jacobs does end up playing basically week one, he's there, this team finishes second in the division. I do believe that. Because this team actually upgraded, whereas the Chargers basically did nothing but change their OC and say, well, that's all we need to do. Broncos, like I said, they're not going to be great. I don't see Sean Payton and his boys being good enough to make this team great. The Raiders, they're going to be second if those two things happen. Chiefs at number one, I mean, obviously, there's no reason to put them anywhere else. They are the best team in the league for a reason. So I think they deserve their spot at number one. But the Raiders, I do think, finished second if everything goes right. But that'll be all. This has been Zom Fox. If you enjoy this content, make sure to, to like and subscribe. Be on the lookout for more videos. Hit the bell. Still have USFL content coming out, you know, from the offseason. Looking forward to next year. Looking back at last year, as well as more NFL content. We still have six more divisions to do. Comment down below if you want any division to be done in the next couple. As always, this has been Zom Fox. Have a great night.